Warning, the following video contains spoilers for Star Trek Picard. Now, ahead, Warp Factor 8, engage. Greetings, minuscule-minded morons of the planet Earth. I am Q, and I am here to give my exalted opinion on John Luke's latest episode, Stardust City Rag, also known as Picard Visits Blade Runner World. So we got another flashback, well, two, kind of, and neither were about the Mars incident. Yay! Now the first one was with Seven of Nine and her attempted rescue of a Starfleet officer. But not just any Starfleet officer, it's little me, Chip. The little one who Seven and Janeway, the woman with the worst taste in mating partners, liberated from the Borg all those years ago. Now this liberation didn't go as well as that one. You know, there's lots of old characters coming back to die. More on that later. And we know it was 13 years ago because the screen told us so, and she was wearing slightly different clothing. Though she looks pretty much the same, I guess 13 years hasn't really changed her. Oh, and the second flashback was merely two weeks ago and just showed us Bruce Maddox. He's on a world that seems filled with organized crime, yet he drinks unthinkingly from a glass brought to him by a crime lord. I was thinking he was going to fall over, and I was not disappointed. Is Maddox that naive? Anyways, overall, the episode was rather fun. Jean-Luc dressing as a Bond villain. Captain Rios has this wheeler and dealer. And poor little Elnor was just ignored by the spam holograms and wasn't even invited to assume a character. It was a fun little scheme, though I will say Seven offering to be the trade for Maddox was not really a surprise. It was like watching a James Bond flick. Not a good one, mind you. Something maybe around the Roger Moore era. And Seven going all Terminator on Bejazel. That was kind of fun. You know, she did seem rather eager to let herself be brought in as bait. And it was such a teachable moment when she left without taking her vengeance. Which was wiped away in minutes when she beams back down with two phaser rifles. Though I have to wonder, slight plot hole? Now they needed the signal booster in order to beam out of the club, because presumably it was shielded in some way. But how was she able to beam right back into it without one of those? Very plot holy. Oh, but in this episode we didn't get to see any of Saji, which works for me. Just throwing scenes at us of her current rom-com situation was getting rather old. But we did get to see a small subplot with Raffi and the son she abandoned due to her relentless pursuit of the truth and drug abuse. Or so I gather. Apparently everyone that Jean-Luc knows is dysfunctional in some way. Future utopia. <laughs> Not with humans in it. Throws away her relationships to investigate a huge cover-up that you and I know exists, but, but most people don't believe it. I just imagine when this whole thing gets blown wide open and the truth is revealed, she'll run back to her son and he'll just reject her again. But hey, at least this episode gave them the information they need to go find Saji. Maddox was found. He told Jean-Luc where he needed to go and it wasn't a disgusting place. And was shortly thereafter killed by Agnes? So it would appear that Agnes was somehow convinced of the rightness of someone's cause. Was it by the oddly ranked Commodore O? Though why she would kill Maddox doesn't seem to make sense. Wouldn't you want to try to get more information out of him? Like the location of the hidden rebel base, I mean synthetic base. It seems a bit ill-conceived. And the EMH did see her standing over a dying Maddox before being deactivated. Won't there be a log of her actions that they'll take a look at after he turns up, I don't know, dead? This episode was good. It was fun, it had some action, and even a few twists. Even if most of them were predictable. Except, of course, for Agnes. Would have been nice to be able to smell her lies. But it was definitely a move in the right direction. Had some humor, particularly with Elnor, who would have thought he'd be the source. And it finally moved the plot along. Now, last time that I judged Picard, I did mention that it was ridiculous that they supposedly don't have money. 
Now, I'm not trying to get into philosophical discussions about whether or not a moneyless society can work, because we know it can. And taking me to task for pointing out that something in a science fiction show is ridiculous is rather short-sighted. Yes, now warp drive and transporters and mind melds and positronic brains are, to you primitive humans, inherently ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that such elements aren't fantastical, but a good story, no matter what ridiculous elements are involved, should follow its own rules. Again, in this episode, the captain spoke to Picard about fees. Maddox spoke to Bejazel about how much he owed her. Now, yes, Recloud does appear to be beyond Federation space, though it's not exactly clear where it is. So they may use money while the Federation doesn't. But let me tell you what money gives you that you can't get in a moneyless society. Freedom! If you lived in a world that did not use money, where everything was available, there would be certain things you just couldn't have delivered by Amazon Prime. Without some form of currency, every requisition of equipment would be subject to someone approving or denying the request. You want to brew your own beer, you can ask for the equipment you'll need, but someone will say yes or no. Do you want to teach your children chemistry? All those chemicals are subject to someone else approving your plan. Now in this current 21st century, you're able to get anything delivered to your home provided you have the money, as long as it's not classified illegal. You can get drill presses and nail guns and power screwdrivers and decide you want to make birdhouses or tree houses or real houses. Money provides a measure of freedom. No matter how bad an idea someone thinks you have, you can purchase the materials to bring that idea to life, as long as you have money. So the democratic, freedom-loving federation, without any money, doesn't seem all that free. But moving back to the episode, we did see some lovely things. Seven created all kinds of chaos. I must admit, seeing her and her adventures at a Fenris Ranger. That would make a cool series. Like the Mandalorian, only the armor's on the inside. We also saw the secret mission of Agnes revealed, and Jean-Luc and his crew are finally off to find Saji after five episodes. But it's definitely something to look forward to. However, in the meantime, your primitive brains may find some entertainment in these other videos over here. For more of the Wisdom of Q, you can subscribe down there, hit that notification bell. Be sure to follow this channel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, remember, the trial never ends.